Well, for more, we can speak now to Dr. Firas Abiyad, who is the manager and the CEO of the Rafiq Hariri Hospital in Beirut. Uh, Dr. Abiyad, yours is a public hospital. It's about halfway between the port of Beirut and Beirut Airport. And I'm just assuming that by being six or seven kilometers from the explosion means you've been spared the kind of damage we've seen elsewhere uh, in the Lebanese capital. Well, I wish. Uh, unfortunately, the explosion was um, so big that we were affected and we had some material damage. Now, the damage has not been severe enough to put us uh, out of service, as has happened to three other hospitals in Beirut. Uh, and we were able to perform our duties as we had tens of casualties coming to our emergency room. I would imagine huge uh, numbers of uh, patients would have come to your hospital, uh, especially the fact that it's a public hospital. What sorts of injuries are your teams uh, typically having to treat? So initially, most of the uh, casualties were from the shock. So you, you had people who had glass injuries or who were, because of the impact, were thrown away um, or hit by some objects. And then the ambulances started bringing in casualties from the explosion sites. And these were uh, more severe uh, kind of injuries, including uh, burns and penetrating injuries. And there were uh, several who had uh, passed away. OK, and even before this tragedy, I mean, your hospital was at the forefront of the battle against the coronavirus. It was also facing a, a funding crisis. Do you have enough medical supplies to, to cope with, with a tragedy on this scale? That's a good question. And unfortunately, uh, you know, we also had to uh, carry the burden from other hospitals because we had to receive a lot of the evacuees from the three hospitals that... Uh, uh, had to, you know, were put out of service because of the blast. So we had uh, amassed some inventory uh, in our stores and we used a lot during the past two days. But obviously, you know, we, we are running very short and we're hoping that the aid that we has been promised will arrive very soon and will allow us to continue to perform our services. And if people want to help and they're watching now, what, what could they do? Anything. I mean, I'm really, I've, you know, I'm a surgeon. I've worked through the civil war and uh, through a lot of difficulties in Lebanon. But, but this is unprecedented. I think we've had the uh, culmination of uh, a financial crisis, a corona, uh, where we are in the middle of a second wave and rising numbers. And now uh, with this decimation uh, that we haven't seen even in the time of the civil war, I think we are in the middle of a perfect storm. And there's a danger, isn't there, that given the urgency and the, and the, the nature of, of this tragedy, that people will let their guard down with regard to the, the COVID-19 virus, and that is going to set the country up for more problems in the weeks to come. That is correct. I mean, and we had been seeing that there was a lot of lockdown fatigue. Uh, people, because of the uh, dire economical situation, were already, they wanted out, they wanted to go back to their work, business. We, we probably were opening a bit too soon just to relieve the financial hardships. And uh, obviously now with this um, you know, incident. It was yesterday. It was extremely difficult to tell people to keep their uh, social distancing uh, or, or even uh, wear a face mask. So I think that unfortunately, those three issues seem to be playing uh, each other in a way that um, is putting us under more stress. OK, well, thank you so much for sparing the time to speak to us. Uh, Dr. Firas Abiyad, the manager and CEO of the Rafiq Hariri Hospital in Beirut, thank you very much indeed.